Hello, everyone, and welcome back to part two of Create Expectations. So if you've not watched part one, you know that I will tell you to go to Zero's channel and watch it first and like and leave a comment and do all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, listen to the first half of the discussion and then come back here where we'll tear everything apart in game. It'll be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> will be fun uh, whenever we whenever we get to the game. Um, it's literally what I said. Yeah. Mine, yeah, fine, whatever. Mm, whatever. Uh, do, do you want to do viewer questions? I mean, you're the one who told me that we're doing viewer questions first, so... Mm -hmm. yeah, Yes, Sarah, I would like to do viewer questions. We won't air this out, but... <laughs> do viewer questions. Okay, um, so I picked three that are kind of sort of timely right now, and then there are a couple that are, I promise are on the list for next episode. Um, okay, so Blaze Walker said, can we expand on our prediction of the next Conquest unit being the Inquisitor shuttle? It doesn't seem like a ship the community needs or deserves. However, since your predictions are usually spot on, I don't doubt you. And I, I, I have to express my disappointment that they, they typed y'all and you mm -hmm. just skipped right over that. I really wanted to hear a Canadian y'all. We don't say y'all. Uh, I mean, you just did, so. <laughs> we don't that say makes, it. We that don't makes say one. it. Y'all don't say it? No. <laughs> Me uh, either. <laughs> uh, except for just now. So go ahead. Go ahead about the Inquisitor shuttle. Okay. Um, so this is just kind of like the worst kept secret right now. It's all over the place. It's all over the community. Um it's pretty much all over the, the Swaga events server. Everyone is kind of talking about it as if it's confirmed. Um, and I've heard it from multiple people that I have heard other things from um, that have oh. come true. So, Right. Well, you and I aren't like information mongers or whatever. Like we're not, we're not right. like the first people to hear all the things. Like we, we have a decent track record of predicting things, I, I think. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, and, and you especially have had, had a couple really good spot on ones lately, which is awesome. Um, but a lot of that is based off of actual, just like hints that the game has given us like the, the kind of things that have been happening in the game. This is more like, We've heard it from. We've heard similar things from the same people who have been exactly accurate, and whereas we're not going to say their names specifically, mm -hmm. that that these are the same people, and if they're wrong, I mean, then they're wrong, and obviously we're wrong. But for you know, it's probably not an exact science. Like for for instance, I know that like Tobias Beckett was planned for the game back back in the um, back in the prepared days, back when all those characters came out, and. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, they just like arbitrarily cut him. He's like not, not a part of the thing, you know. So they they might just arbitrarily decide to swerve to something else. But this this seems about as substantial a rumor as can be. I mean, yeah, still a, still a rumor though. Right, right, exactly. It's just very. I feel like this is probably one of the first rumors I've heard that is just all over the place. Yeah. Oh, and that, I mean, in some ways that's, I feel like the, the only other one that was all over the place mm -hmm. is, uh, everyone said that we were going to get the, what, what's it called? The Nihilus capital uh, ship. Right. Which has not come true yet. No, nope. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, but, but other things in that prediction did come true, but uh, it, I don't know. It also wouldn't surprise me, though, just in general, for for the Inquisitor ship, because they've been telling us to work on our Inquisitors mm -hmm. for so long that I feel like it just is following what they're saying. Oh, yeah. I, I, think, I think it makes a lot of sense. It, it is an interesting thing, though, because he is so prohibitively expensive to get get and so far he's only had he's at a seven day window to unlock and that's it mm -hmm. and so if maybe that's what they're waiting on is 
like for the Grand Inquisitor ship to be announced, and then they'll be like, "Hey, here's his event." So they go unlock him, and then go work on a ship. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yikes. Um, okay, so next question. Joshua French said, "Are you farming accuracy arrows to help counter Dodge Cron the Dodge Cron meta? Any other thoughts on countering it?" Are you? Uh, I'm not throwing them away. I'm definitely keeping them. Uh, I haven't remodded anyone specifically for accuracy. I also haven't seen a ton of Dodge Datacron specifically yet. Oh, I like the, that you're that you're facing in GAC yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, I've seen the occasional one, but not to the point that it has screwed me over. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. So Professor X is like no no accuracy arrows at all. Um, I think I have a couple on that account. I, I have to check. But my main account, I've kept a couple. Like I've always rolled them. If they had like I, if they were gray, then I threw them away. But if they had if they're green or higher, then I'd I'd always just roll to see if they had speed. And if they had decent speed, I'd, I'd keep them around. And uh, so that that has turned into now uh, I've, I've deployed them like I don't I still have a huge collection of them frankly mm -hmm. uh, you know but I do have I have a plus 20 something speed one on Fennec that you know plus 30 accuracy that she gets 18 accuracy for her relic eight so she's actually at almost 50% accuracy just just with that um, I, and that, that saved me actually in week three of 3v3. Uh, now, now though, I'm probably going to be us, uh, using other counters on Lord Vader. So uh, I now have a, an accuracy arrow on Darth Vader mm -hmm. and an accuracy arrow on uh, Supreme Leader Kylo. Mm, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because th those are the those are the two. Like I'll be using those two to counter other galactic legends and the people I'm facing. Like I, I'm number 29. It's it's obnoxious as hell, but. I'll, I'll be facing other people with, I mean, just like a casual look just in their arena uh, oh, Datacrons. It, mm -hmm. It's just like, they have so, ma so many, like, uh, you know, it, they, they, have, they have very tailored uh, Datacrons too of like, it has two stats. It has 50% dodge mm -hmm. and 51% deflection. Right. You know, like, and no other stats. You'd know that they just re-rolled, re-rolled, re-rolled to get that exact combo just to mess with the peop with people. Yeah, which is, which is wild. Because, like, for, for me, the Datacrons I see have, like, four stats, five stats. Like, <laughs> people aren't re-rolling. <laughs> there's a guy in my group who has over 10 100% dodge Datacrons. That's disturbing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the, and the, those you spend some money to get those mm -hmm. for the rerolls. Like that's, uh, whatever, and, and that's not judge. I, I just like, I have to be ready. So my whole thing this this conquest has been farming accuracy datacrons because I I don't I don't have the money to try to farm dodge datacrons as well, and I need to be able right. to hit my opponents. And so I, I'm like, all right, accuracy. All, you know, all the accuracy I can get and the accuracy arrows are a part of it. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the accuracy has already saved me in a few different matches. The arrows, I, I expect they'll come in real handy. I, I just had to put them on very specific characters because I, I don't have enough to go around. Just, just my specific big damage dealers, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Uh... It's a great meta right now. It's so poison. I it's, hate it, man. It's awful. It's <laughs> I love awful. G I love GAC and I like Datacrons in general, but I wouldn't wish this on us again. Yeah. Hard pass next time, guys. Um, okay, so last question. Makia wants to know, do you think it's better to use Kira or Dash as your lead outside of GAC for smugglers slash scoundrels? Outside of GAC. Mm -hmm. So. Like conquest sort of thing? I'm thinking conquest, territory battles, I guess territory war. Um, and then, I mean, you do, mm. we do have smuggler runs. Um, 
Uh, I. So, sorry. Go ahead. No, I. You have. I'm almost always using dash now. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I don't see much reason not to use dash. He's just so much fun. Well, I, and he's a requirement character, so eventually, if you get if you get profundity unlocked or star killer, like he's going to be relict for you. Mm -hmm. Kira is not a requirement character right now, and she requires at least uh, what I think it, it's like four hundred carbanti at least, just for her last it's... two levels. Like you get her to gear ten, you're like, oh, that was easy, and then it's like, oh yeah, get, to get her to gear eleven, you need two hundred. You're like, all right, fine, fine, fine. You do it, and then it's like another two hundred, please, to get to gear twelve. <laughs> Yeah, no thank you. Um, I, and I, I will say, like, realistically as well, and I don't know, but I have never seen a Kira or Dash Rendar lead team in territory battles do well. Um, it's always been BAM lead for smugglers that I've seen. Sure. So, I, like, I wouldn't even use either of them there, but realistically yeah. then you're just going into territory war or conquest well i, I don't want to make it about gac but I, I think i will just a tiny bit in the sense that well and territory wars just in the sense that so she gives some good boosts to her team but she doesn't mm -hmm. give them any way to elevate at the start like you, you kind of usually need some kind of jump start to get things going and her team just kind of sits there and takes whatever the enemy team has to give it and then you get to go. As opposed to Dash, it's like, well, he's already fast, and then he gives himself another 20 speed, and gives everyone else 20 speed, and then he gives everyone turn meter once he goes with his AoE, and, like, his whole team, like, goes, you know? Mm -hmm. And that that's the case for every for every game mode, in fact. And Kira is just like, no, just sit here and take it, guys, and then eventually we'll start turn meter training and stuff. But, but like, she's just more stagnant, more... She's, she's a lot more static, so... I think Dash, much more dynamic, and in general, just a better... She, he does more things. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. So, Dash yeah. over Kira, I guess. I guess, yeah. Um, now, if they, if they come out with, like, midriff Kira, no. <laughs> just just to mock people who... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's, let's get... Maybe it's Padme, guys. She's, she's gonna be so good. Oh man. Okay. Um. So let's. So there's no pack to review because because there's nothing really good in the store right now. Nothing. No. Yeah. So you thought of something though that would be fun to point out. We sure. Can, we can go look in the game. Yeah, we're already in the game. So. Are we in? The, we're in the game. Lovely. Madness, right? Lovely. Um, yes, yeah, so you can get, I don't even know what these are called. Circuit breakers. You have a lot of crystals, Sarah. Thank you. Mm. That, that's the, that's the idea. Okay. Oh, you know what? You're probably on there. There mm -hmm. we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I blame you. But so, so you, first off, you have a lot. These are called circuit breakers. Yeah. You have a lot of circuit breakers. Yes. We, we can go over that later. Um, but they're available. They're available in the weekly weekly shipment. Not regular shipments. Weekly shipments. <laughs> I was like, they're in shipments. And you're like, they're on my shipments. I'm like, your weird Canadian shipments have no part <laughs> in this discussion. Uh, they're in weekly shipments. They are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, this is like a pretty good deal. Yeah, this is not bad like, at all. Considering? Yeah, know. like, uh, I don't know. Like, I I think I think the thing, uh, the thing I've always felt about these, so I, I used to be the sucker who bought a couple of these packs a lot of times. Like, most times when they came through the store, they'd give us, uh, I, I forget, like 30 of them for 15 bucks or whatever, and a bunch of other, a, a bunch of other, 6e upgrade materials but th these are the things that i really fixated on and i mean yeah they're they're pretty good they're fine i i just i always felt like they're so in a way they're short term like mm -hmm. now we can we can farm them now uh but i don't know like three refreshes do three refreshes get us 10 of these i don't remember the last time i saw one of these drop 
No? Yeah. I mean, like, they... while I was farming them? Oh, they they drop. I mean... They, they do, but it, it's a it's it's a pretty slow trickle. Like, 160... Yeah. Uh, I mean, you get other stuff when you're farming that node, so mm-hmm. it's not just a one one dimensional thing. But I think if you want these, these are actually a fairly good deal. I mean, they're fine. They're they're not the cancer that are like the bronzium relic mm. uh, pieces and stuff. Yeah, those are awful. Horrible credit or <laughs> crystal value. Um, yeah. So that's kind of fun that they're there. Yeah, I, I, I noticed, uh, I think someone else was talking about them the other day. I was like, oh, I'll, I guess I'll go check it out. And sure enough, there they are. Mm-hmm. So No one behold. Should be there for another couple of days. Oh, and then they'll be there probably. I, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to just be there permanently. It seems mm-hmm. like they are now, now that they're farmable. But I mean, I guess that would be good. I think so. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, get get us ready for seven dots. Oh gosh. Don't don't will that. <laughs> don't will that into existence. <laughs> um, okay. Do you wanna do a do you wanna do a character review? Sure. Who you got? We've got so I've been trying to pick ones that are going to be accelerated shortly. And Dash will be accelerated shortly. That's or sorry, Kyle. I was Dash will be accelerated shortly, but we've already reviewed him. Kyle will be accelerated after Dash. So, what does Kyle Katarn mean to you, just in terms of the lore? Do you know anything about him? No. Okay. Um, the only character I had heard of out of the Star Killer characters, so the only two were Mara Jade and Darth Talon. Okay. So, yeah, Kyle Katarn meant nothing to me. What are his two abilities that you don't have leveled up, out of curiosity? Um, so this is his Zeta, which... What does it do? Uh, duh, 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 he inflicts force influence oh. to all enemies for two turns, if he has Jedi Knight. It's pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... Just saving your Zetas for other better things? Well, I didn't get around to needing to spend it. Oh. And then the other one is... Right. Territory war, or territory battle. Yeah, this is his Omicron. So, which is a good Omicron, like, if, if you are using him, <clears throat> ironically, in a, in a Rebel fighter team, not a Jedi team. <laughs> uh, so people say that they've gotten this one just so they can hit auto in all, all you know in four different phases of light side territory battle yeah it is I, i've heard nothing but good things about this omicron like to like exactly that you can hit auto i've heard people who if you track like your combats and your waves and stuff people who have this one are like yeah you can just put a straight like six minimum 16 down yeah, you're gonna go four for four. So, right. Well, it's the cost of admit admittance, though, because uh, I mean, you pointed it out too. It like some people like it's it's tough to have the team that he's the best on, like the Mon Mothma team. Everyone's gonna mm-hmm. have relic Mon Mothma eventually. Cause she's a requirement. Katarn is a requirement for Star Killer, and then everyone else isn't a requirement. Like Cara Dune, kind of, but you can get Bando unlocked. For pretty low gear on Kara. Right. Exactly. So you basically have half of a rebel fighter squad. Right. Well, and, and in fact, like, since Mothra's not even a rebel fighter, like, you have, like, one quarter of one. <laughs> right. Unfortunately. Yeah. So, which I just find it funny that he is a Jedi, but is more used as a rebel fighter. Yeah. You know, I actually had some fun with him a while ago uh, on, on my, I think it was on my alt, when I, I mixed up cer- certain teams uh, and ended up needing an extra Jedi. So I threw him on with Jedi Master Luke. And 
Uh, that's the one team, like, so he really thrives because he gets, well, like, one of his key mechanics, which is why I'm like, oh, you should put that Zeta on him, is, like, once he gets to Jedi Knight, which if he's with Mon Mothma, like, as long as you take ten turns, mm-hmm. they're eventually, he's going to get called to assist ten different times, and then he's going to, like, he, he builds his, uh, like, he... He starts out decent, but his his offensive abilities like eventually just destroy people. Like you really have to move with a sense of urgency to take him out when he's on uh, when he's on defense <clears throat> because of that. Uh, and he just builds so much that and with other Jedi teams, a lot of times he just doesn't like he needs to be called to assist. Like that's the thing. He has to attack out of turn. Mm -hmm. So unless he has some kind, some way to hit back, you know, to counter them or to assist, it doesn't work. But if he's with Jedi master Luke, then everyone can call him to assist. Right. Yeah. Cause you're just spamming his leadership. Right. And and then his basic actually does two hits. Mm -hmm. So it does double damage to B1s and B2s as well. Yeah. Yeah. Which is always a plus. Well, well, like, so it'll it'll actually do three instances of damage uh, in territory battles with Jedi Master Luke, for instance. Because because of the special and then his two little taps that just do 10% damage or whatever. But, Mm -hmm. you know, still count. Still counts. Yeah, so um, what what else do you know about him? Not not just by the lore. Like, I, I love playing the games that he was in. He was, he was a really cool character, and then he eventually mound, found his way into, like, the books and stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. what what other things, like, how, how do you use him? Um, so right now, he goes with Mon Mothma, even though I don't have the team. I, I'm just like, he he's geared. You, you have to spend something on it. Sure. Um, but then it's also fun in conquest with jedi master luke ironically enough oh nice um because he has ability block on his basic and you've got to mm. spam ability block for a feat so can get that yeah. that done quite nicely between him and basti nice well yeah so he only does basic uh he only does ability block on basic when it's his turn that's mm-hmm. the distinction to make but but yeah he does um which I, I use his basic a lot because uh, as the opening move, because I'm like, okay, I get ability block on someone and it gives an extra 5% turn meter to Pow, who mm-hmm. is, who wants, the, who he really wants that next turn. Um, so one, one thing that other people don't uh, realize is I think it's the power of the valley. Could you pull that up for a sec? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this one is uh, Dispel All... Here, go up again. Dispel All Debuffs on All Rebel Fighter Allies. So this one is a cleanse. Like, Mon Mothma has her her cleanse that she does with her basic, you know, whenever she's assisting and stuff. But this one is really nice if your whole team is just getting debuffed to hell. Or, mm-hmm. or like, if you're trying to clean up, like, a Lord Vader team, for instance. And Right. I mean, I don't know how well it works now against this current version of Lord Vader, but... It used to, you know, it's like, well, if you get into a situation where Lord Vader has everyone dazed and no one's assisting, no one's doing anything, he can at least cleanse that for a minute and then hopefully get you back on the turn meter train. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Not to mention it does does a lot of damage, uh, mm-hmm. you know, once, once you finally get it to the AoE point. And, I mean, this this is also the ability that eventually just destroys Aiden teams if if that right. happens. You know, like, so usually Aiden's pretty good against this team. But in the instances that they lose, it's because someone has a really awesome Kyle Katarn, like mm-hmm. Relic 7 or 8, at usually, and he gets to the Jedi point, like, they've let him live or revived to the point where he's he's at Jedi Knight, and he does his AoE, and it kills, like, half the team. Right. And then you're screwed. Right. And then he does a saber toss a little bit later, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. He's He, he sounds like so much fun, and I really just want the rest of the Rebel Fighter team, but it's just such an investment. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I so I use it to pretty good effect on my main account, and my alts does okay with it as well. But yeah, it's an investment because none of those characters are requirements. And right now, <laughs> there's so many unlock things like you kind of need to play by the requirements a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 
that's the thing where you feel like you're being forced into a certain farm order or gear order so true sadly All right i mean it's nice it's a nice pot sweetener though you get his ship as well yeah that's true so yeah. he is a pilot bless you <laughs> I don't think they could hear that one either. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Do you want, how much time do we have? Um, five minutes. Oh, that's plenty of time to roast a roster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. So. Just got to be really mean really fast. All right. Here we go. All right. Well, let's see. So this is Blur. Mm-hmm. And the guild empire nemesis. Mm -hmm. they're, they're they're like we have to capitalize nemesis. Yep, evidently. But not empire though. That, <laughs> I I would agree with his title. It is so uncivilized. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So he is six point nine million GP. So he's pretty close to Professor X range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's, he's got executor. He's in mm -hmm. rhodium two though. Oh man. Okay. Mm -hmm. Strike one. Okay, so ships. Um, okay. Eight fleets out of ten. So he's no missing radis. radis and other radis. Double radis. Add rads. Yep. Or add, yeah, rad. Radis and add rad. Okay, so. Okay. Um, and okay. tie interceptor is sad right now. Sag. That is sad. Uh, and four star finalizer, also sad. Okay, so you have. Uh, Thrawn Relic, executor. Okay. Okay. Oh, boy. So, just that's not farm ships again. Mm okay. I just don't understand why people don't farm things. Like. I, I don't know. I, like, you might need them eventually. How many stars is that TIE Bomber? Okay, that's seven. That's I always seven. see, like, a I always see like a phantom, I know. like, star next to him. <laughs> okay, uh, it looks like at least they farmed their their pilot list ships. That's, that's something. Right? Okay. Um. <laughs> I, I don't... It's just funny. You just... don't farm shuttle, man. It's always so funny to me too to see like relic pilots in the not farm ship. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I mean, they're they're farmed ish. All right, so we could give them like a C on ships. That's that's probably the best grade I've given someone in ships for, <laughs> at, like maybe ever. Like on these roster roasts, no no one has good ships ever. It's just like this consistent morass. Oops. Um, more and more ass. Yeah, it's just. Anyway, it's just interesting. So they have a relic, Kyle Katarn. They do. So, I guess they have Star Killer, or are getting Star Killer. Let's go find out. Do you want to see the data crons? Yeah, I'll just take a glance. Not as a judgment thing. That doesn't really care that much. Okay, that's okay. fine. So, I'm curious to see if they have Malgus actually. Mm. I, I pre scouted this, so. Oh. You, My guess is. Go ahead. You can tell me where you want to go. No, uh, you've already pre scouted. You can, you can find. You already found some things, I'm sure. Do, do you want to see if they have Malgus? All right, so they have two Galactic Legends. Mm -hmm. They're the same Galactic Legends as Professor X, so. Mm -hmm. But they're in Erodium. They're not even in Kyber. Okay. Um. Oops, sorry. Yeah, let's let's go look at wrong Sith. button. Here are your Sith. No Malgus. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. No Malgus. No Bastila Sean fallen at gear twelve, gear thirteen either. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, hey, but you do have the Savage Omicron at gear 11. Or, oh, no, that's just a Zeta. Never that's mind. just a I'm Zeta. Just, never mind. Okay. You're seeing things. Imaginary stars and imaginary worlds. <laughs> um, How do I okay. put the Zeta on him, though? Does, okay, so he does have Starkiller. So, Professor X is okay. Starkiller. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so he has all the tools, but then he uh, just... Uh, not doing it. Okay. Okay. All right. So what? What do you? I don't know. So you don't. I guess you don't have any good data crons to go with that team, anyways. I was gonna say, what are you doing with Vesis? Like, are you putting Vesis on the Star Killer team? Are you just putting Jedi Training Ray on the team? Like, clearly not working on like getting Ray unlocked because Scav Ray. I mean, she has some gear, I guess, but. But not a ton. I mean. Hmm. Also, I don't think is working on getting Ray unlocked. <laughs> um no. and he doesn't have radis anyway so he can't get ray unlocked you need radis right and all of his ships in for mm-hmm. resistance are total crap so yep um oh i, I like bb11 though sad so sad and only one zeta which one mm, okay fine that's the right one that's the correct first fine. zeta fine um Okay, so no Malgus. Okay. No Maul. So it doesn't like Conquest. No, but he's got Cat, and he's got... Well, yeah, the ship is only six star. Um, Hmm. Let's see. I don't think I saw a dad bod. Yeah, no dad bod. (laughs) Hard to miss a dad bod. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, so doesn't, doesn't care about conquest, which is, uh, that just makes me sad in general. Right, I, well, I, I'm like, I, that's good. I get it. It's time and indu- time. In- intensive. Intensive. Thank you. Intensive. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's just, I don't know. Oh, come on. No, you have a Zeta on Fett, on Boba Fett, and no Zetas on Jango. But, like, at least put his unique on, man. Like, that, that is egregious. Holy balls, that is awful. <laughs> you, you have one on Embo. Yeah. And you don't have one on Django. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that's one of the top first Zetas you put on someone, I feel like. Because, you, ugh. Mm. Off this screen, please. Um, ah. This, this will also. Ah. Okay, I'm afraid now. <laughs> mm. This just makes me sad. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, he's, he's like conversations to Arc Trooper. He's like, "What would you say <laughs> you do here?" <laughs> uh, Arc Trooper would die here. Uh... Yeah, he's like, "I'm here for the five sacrifice." <laughs> <laughs> and then Ego can die immediately after. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, so this is a thing. So, th- there's your 501st. Um, yeah, put those Zetas on, though. I'd like to help. Yeah. And Cam is four stars. So, I'm like, just just get your 501st up there. Get some more Cam shards. Yeah, that, he'll just single-handedly get his guild. All the Cam shards by the time he is 80. Hey, I mean, I don't know. We had, you know what? We had Ditch someone... Your... We had someone in our guild who joined and who joined in March. So he's been in our guild for six months. He got Cam seven star last month. So in five months, he got him seven stars. And when he joined, he had a four star Cam. Well, that's just because our guild is awesome. Yeah, but I'm just saying you can. Because you're awesome. You can do it if you've if everyone just agrees to to get it done. Because this is the thing. He's got the Qui Gon on me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's good. Yep. He's Relic. You've got your and Anakin. Take your cam. Put him to gear 11. Yeah. Stick him uh, with Qui-Gon still. Yeah, put his Zeta on. Like, he's still pretty good with that Qui-Gon team. Especially now that you don't have to worry about a Datacron for that team yet. Like, you're yep. good. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, yeah. And you've got Shock. <laughs> so... It's just the 501st. Um, so I actually think, and I don't know, maybe you can tell me what your thoughts are, but 
I'm guessing he's going for Sith Eternal next. Because he's got uh, relics on. Palpatine. Stark is worked on. Mm-hmm. Veers. Yeah, Tarkin doesn't have any gear, but he's kind of worthless until it's time. Anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe he's going for Sith Eternal. I I, I don't know. That's just my, my guess. Um, go, go ahead and do that. I guess I don't <laughs> care. Is there anything else you want to see? All of these rosters always just discourage me so much. I'm like, what? why are you like this? Uh, is, is there anything else you think we should see? Um, I can't remember. I know I looked through everything. Okay, we just looked at Empire. They don't have Inquisitorius done, so... No. Um... I don't know. Look at their Separatist. I want to see what their Grievous team is like. Fairly fleshed out. Okay. That's not... That's actually pretty good. A rare mark of approval on this roster. Mm-hmm. That's... I mean... And they had the good sense of stopping on Geos, where they did. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think like that's pretty much what my Grievous team looks like, I think. Oh, no, at Relic 5, I mean, that's what mine looks like, too. I think I right? took B1 to Relic 7, but, you know, Grievous could be 8. But, the, I mean, for the roster this size, this is fine. This is good. Yeah. Just just that Django. Just... Or Django. You have a, you have a, you have a Zeta on Droidica. Not on Django. You have a Zeta on Magna Guard. But not on Django. Sad. All right. I'm ready to just... Be done? Be done with this, Django. All right. That's it. Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>